Welcome once again to my podcast, Reframing the World, with Douglas J. Boggs, on my blog, Smoke and Mirrors and the Art of Critical Thinking, found at douglasjboggs.substack.com. Today is March 3rd, 2022, and I will be reading the most recent post, Ode to the Dot. It was on a Valentine's Day in 1990 when Voyager 1 took this photo of something that no human had ever seen in history. Famed astronomer Carl Sagan requested that NASA take the shot as the small satellite flew by the backside of the planet Saturn and through its rings was able to catch a glimpse of what Sagan would later refer to as a pale blue dot. An image of our planet that was only the size of one pixel, appearing as a pale blue dot against the vastness of space, laying quietly in a sunbeam of light over six billion kilometers away. These past few days, through satellite technology, we have been able to monitor the movements of a caravan of chaos moving from the borders of Russia to the interior depths of an invaded Ukrainian landscape. Watching firsthand and in real time the movements of a foreign military industrial complex the likes no one has ever seen perform on the world stage. To most of us, it is all simply pixels on a screen. The quietness of the sunbeam is lost in the deafening noise of war emanating from the human screams of terror, media madness and talking heads, bombs, planes and tanks, from Putin's war games and rationalizations from all sides. Life is always about balance. This is basic physics, life's yin and yang. We must remember that for every hot, there is cold. For every right, there is a left. Or would that be wrong? For every positive, there is a negative. For every good, there is a bad. For every light there is dark, for every will there is a way, for every tear there is a smile, and for every win a loss, for every war there is peace, for everything there is a season. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams, wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams. World losers and world forsakers on whom the pale moon gleams, yet we are the movers and shakers of the world forever, it seems. With wonderful, deathless ditties, we build up the world's great cities, and out of a fabulous story, we fashion an empire's glory. One man with a dream at pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown, and three with the new song's measure can trample a kingdom down. We in the ages lying in the buried pass of the earth, built Nineveh with our sighing, and Babel itself in our mirth, and o'er through them with prophesying to the old of the new world's worth. For each age is a dream that is dying, or one that is coming to birth. Arthur O'Shaughnessy. I make music and can honestly say that it has saved my life. There are times when I dream throughout the day and night. I dream as I wander by the lone sea breakers or as I sit by a desolate stream. I wonder as I wander through the days gone by. I have witnessed firsthand both birth and death. We must remember that we watch or we create We ask or we ignore. We go forward or we get left behind. Think of the rivers of blood spilled by all those generals and emperors so that in glory and triumph they could become the momentary masters of a fraction of a dot. Carl Sagan We are tasked to make the lives better for those who come after us in this plane of existence. We are tasked to make happiness out of sorrow. We are tasked to stand and be a witness. We are tasked to help those who ask or cannot help themselves. 
although we are also tasked to find consistency in our existence. There's an old saying that it is best that we choose our battles. Not every battle can be won, so not every battle should be fought. However, every war has a victim and a victor, no matter the premise. What is it to say that what makes it okay to ignore one wrong while another is played out to become the bastion of democracy? We must take into consideration of our perceivable lack of attention or memory in these moments to the fact that our own government has invaded and or bombed senselessly Somalia, Libya, Vietnam, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Nicaragua, Yemen, Japan, Syria, and countless other countries. Yet we seem to find a reason for this. We will find a reason for it in order to rationalize our position of rightness. These moments hold truths for politicians and conquerors. These moments hold pain and death for the innocents in their wake. These moments hold riches for those who see an opportunity. These moments hold despair and destruction for those who are on the wrong side of right. These moments hold a right that tends to become wrong as time moves forward. For us to be right more as a species, we must learn to rise above the wrongness of war. War has never solved a problem, but only pushed the can farther down the street until another generation perceives things in a different way. It wasn't long ago when Great Britain, Russia, and the United States were all allies to another invading dictator moving across the European landscape. Hitler killed millions before most of the world found him to be wrong. Stalin killed twice as many before the world found him to be wrong. Mao killed even more before the world recognized that wrong. And the list goes on. But lest not forget the ode to the dot. Remember that we do know the difference between wrong and right. We've seen it too many times before not to recognize it. We must step up and make our voices known to all who participate in these charades. All participate, even when we don't. War is wrong. Period. <laughs>